Hey Popverse, Veronica Valencia here at the 20th anniversary of Emerald City Comic Con. You know, one of my favorite things of every convention is the cosplay showcase. And this year at Emerald City Comic Con, we have the Cosplay Central Crown Championships. The Cosplay Central Crown Championships is a showcase celebrating the craftsmanship of many talented cosplayers who have spent hours, weeks, and even months preparing for this moment where they get to debut their cosplay to the world. And now we get to share the moment where they take this stage with all of you. This is a complimentary presentation of the Cosplay Central Crown Championships brought to you by the Next Generation 10G Network. Only from Xfinity, the future starts now. Thank you to Xfinity for partnering with us to bring to you the Cosplay Central Crown Championships from Emerald City Comic Con 2023. Let's go! It's that time. It's time for the Cosplay Central Crown Championships. Please welcome your host, Mama Samu. Hello, hello everyone. There are so many of you. Welcome to the Cosplay Central Crown Championships Western Preliminaries. Welcome all. Thank you all so much to, for being here and thank you everybody who is here digitally thanks to Xfinity, the next generation 10G network who has provided free streaming on Pop First. So thank you so much for our sponsor. All right. Okay, I get to put away my first cue card. One down. So many to go. Yes, thank you so much. I am honored to be here hosting this year. I have competed in this competition multiple years, and I am so excited to get to announce and show off my friends this time. It's so exciting, because everybody backstage, they're friends. Every Cosplayers help cosplayers. We are all here to support each other, and I am so excited for you to see everything. And without further ado, I'd like to announce our judges, who have already been doing hours of work looking at all of our contestants. So. Without further ado, let's announce our first cosplayer, uh, Eric Korgeek, Korgeek Cosplay. <laughs> Eric started as a maker at a young age. Over the years, his passion for making grew. After obtaining a degree in graphic design, Eric honed his skills with woodworking, furniture, and furniture building. He was introduced to cosplay while attending his first Emerald City Comic Con in 2011, over 10 years ago. Props and costumes quickly became a passion as he was driven by the many challenges of their creation, of their creation offered. Over the last 12 years, he has become an accomplished prop and costume maker. Along the way, he has gained skills with thermoplastics, foam smithing, clay sculpting, mold making, resin casting, 3D printing, airbrushing, sanding most notably, and more. He is best known for his highly detailed handmade craftsmanship and is inspired by the cosplay community and sharing the craft with all. Big round of applause for Corgi. Hey, Emerald City. Now it's on. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. And Next up, our second judge for the evening, we have May Jean Cosplay. May Jean is an award-winning maker from the Pacific Northwest, nurse by day and cosplayer by night. She consistently challenges herself to learn and become an avid mixed media craftsperson over time. She incorporates a wide range of techniques and skill sets into her builds, including armor fabrication, prop building, needlework, electronics, and much more. As the first place overall winner of Crown Championships of Cosplay at EC3 last year, she is thrilled to return to the convention to judge this year. So May will, will, be, doing, uh, will be competing in Chicago at the, at the finals in just a few weeks here. Well, we are here to pick our 2024 competitor. Before that, we have one more judge, and 
Let's get let's get a drum roll for the last drudge. Let's come on. Let's get let's loosen it up. Drum roll. As we welcome Seattle Cosplay. Seattle Cosplay has an extensive professional background in the fashion industry as a designer. She has a wide array of experience working with different materials, creating high quality cosplays. You can find her in cosplay groups, judging contests, helping under sewists become more skilled, and providing a career example to be in the fashion industry. She feels really honored to be one of the judges of this year's competition in her hometown. She, she represents a diverse point of view into the culture of cosplay, inclusive fitting for different body types, and overall expertise into the world of costume construction. Let's give it up for all of our judges. Like I said, they have already spent hours poring over these costumes that you're about to see, making some hard decisions. You know, maybe it's a few more still to make, but uh, we shall see. But before, and we have a couple more things before we get our show started. Let's go ahead and welcome to the stage H, the prop maker extraordinaire, HDC. Hello! <laughs> Greetings, everyone. I am Tim from HDC, and uh, excited to be here today in collaboration with my friend Chad with Hoku Props. Uh, you might know us from our award-winning creations, our uh, industry work, and our uh, dance moves at our parties. But today we are here to talk about something a little more exciting. The new awards for the Cosplay Central Crown Championships. When we were brainstorming ideas for the awards, we wanted to capture the essence of cosplay. Creativity, passion, pure awesomeness, and we also wanted to make sure that each award was unique, just like our contestants. So we went back to our roots. We used a mix of traditional fabrication techniques, modern techniques to craft the business from 3D printing, paint and finishing techniques, and each award is art that we are proud to present to the winners of the Crown Championships. But, enough from me. Let's hear from my partner in crime, or as I like to call him, the one-eyed wonder of the prop world. Hello everyone, I'm Chad from Hoku Props, and I'm thrilled to be a part of this collaboration with HDC. Now, before we get into the awards, I have to address the elephant in the room, or should I say, the eye patch on my face. I may only have one eye, but don't worry, I don't let that stop me from creating amazing props, costumes, and awards. In fact, I like to think of myself as the Cyclops of the cosplay world. You know, the X-Man with the laser eye? Yeah, that's me. Except, instead of lasers, I shoot creativity from my eye socket. Okay, maybe that's a bit gross, but you get the idea. Now, back to the awards. When Tim from HDC and I started this project, we knew we wanted to create something that would make cosplayers feel like the superheroes that they are. We wanted each award to be a symbol of their dedication, their hard work, and their passion for the craft. And of course, we wanted them to look freaking awesome. So we put on our thinking caps and we got to work. Going into it, we knew that we were gonna need variations. So we decided that we we're gonna create a modular design that could accommodate the needs of each Cosplay Central competition, starting with Emerald City Comic Con. Next came the category centerpieces. We had needlework, armor, and FX, followed by the interchangeable gems with the Cosplay Central emblem taking center stage. Once the concept designs were finalized, I started 3D modeling the base metal before moving on to the unique category centerpieces. From there, it was handed off to Tim, to 3D print all of the individual pieces before molding, resin casting, and meticulously custom finishing each award. The end result is a set of awards that we are incredibly proud of, and we hope that each winner feels the love and care that went into creating these totems of cosplay achievement. And with all that said, thank you all for tuning in. And remember, even if you only have one eye like me, you can still see the world in a whole new way. Okay, maybe that's a bit cheesy, but you get the idea. Not just medals, but a new crown. Ooh, an actual crown? An actual crown. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. 
Thank you, Reed Pop. Thank you, everybody, for having us here, having us involved with these medals. Uh, if anybody gets to C2E2, we will be doing the full unveiling for this year's crown championship there. Look forward to seeing you guys. Thank you so much, ACC and Hoku, for making these fantastic medals. I, I want one. I want one. I'd hang that proudly on my wall. And there are a few more things. Uh, that can, there are a few uh, categories that they mention, and I'd like to go into a little bit of more detail about what those mean. So we have the needlework category, which is generally things made out of fabric or fiber arts. If your costume is maybe generally ball gowns, if you crocheted your costume, some leather work, that would be needlework. So, and that is one of our categories. We have three of them. Our second category is the armor category, which is generally EVA foam, warbla, metal, some other hardened leathers. It's pretty much the, if it protects you in battle, it's, it's probably in this category. And our third category is the FX category, which generally involves lights, electronics, you know, the things that are, that, you know, make motorized things, stuff that, you know, you may uh, be concerned about burning the house down while making. That's generally where, you, where you'd be. Or any fancy makeup techniques, uh, prosthetics, all of that would be in the FX category. And we will have a top winner from each of those, as well as, an, as three overall winners, first, second, and third place. Third place will win $250, a medal and two tickets to EC3 20, uh, 2024. Uh, second place wins $500, a medal and two tickets to EC3 2024. And first place, on top of being the champion for the, West, for the Western part of the United States who will go to represent us in Chicago, will win $1,000, a medal and two tickets to EC3 2024 because, of course, we want to have them back after they've absolutely blown us away with their craftsmanship. So that's what they're working for. I could hear some cheers from backstage on those. They're very excited. <laughs> those are some really great prizes. And I am so excited to get into this show. But before, I have one more thing that I would love to share with you, and that is a day in the life of a competitive cosplayer. Because I've been through this, and I'd like you to understand how much work and dedication goes into just competing here. After all the making of the cosplay is done, all of, all of that hard work, all the hundreds of hours, months of planning is done, and you get to convention, what happens? So all of these contestants had to apply to be here. Hundreds of people will apply. We have, I believe, 30 that will be going across this stage. They have worked hard to get here. And once they got here, signed up for a judging slot, which could be, I believe, any time, you know, starting really early in the morning. Like, you got to wake up at 6 in the morning to be in makeup by 9 because you've got a whole bunch of paint and you've got a whole bunch of armor. You've got to get around. So a lot of them have been up since extremely early, after two days of con already. So you're already tired. They have come. They have professed, shown their heart and soul, their hundreds of hours of work to these judges who are just as skilled and who are, who are just going to, are, one, the judges, they hype everyone up. The judges are here to hype up every single one of the contestants, but you have about, I'm gonna say, what, four minutes? Five minutes? Five, five minutes to explain hundreds of hours of work. That's, that is tough, that is, that is, that, that is word vomit, is what I like to call that. Is the just, we're just going to just as fast as we can. So they've gone through all that. They've been in these costumes for sometimes, at this point, 10 hours, 12 hours, and they're about to show off to you on this extremely hot stage. So please give a massive round of applause for all of our cosplayers who have gone through all this work to be here today. And now, without further ado, let's get into showing off these cosplayers. We have our first competitor in the needlework category, Fennec Lenan as Fennec Shand from Star Wars, The Book of Boba Fett and The Mandalorian. Fen uh, 
inspired to make her first cosplay costume in her 60s. She spent several months working on this 23-piece screen-accurate costume. A large variety of techniques and materials were used. She used a combination of old skills and new, from braiding to sewing, and to 3D printing and carving. She made her own pattern pieces, when, and when accurate fabrics were not available commercially, she stitched the designs into the fabric herself. The costume includes nine different black fabrics with over 60 feet of piping. When she started her costume, she had never heard of the 501st and ended up being the first approved Fennec Shand in the world. Let's give it up for Fennec Linan. That is proof that there is no limit, no age limit, nothing to stop you from cosplaying and starting at any time. Don't mind me as I just organize these note cards, which are about as organized as my head. Next up, we have Amy as Rose Quartz from Steven Universe. This Rose Quartz is based on the classic white dress design for the character. The dress is structured around a corset, a cage crinoline, and layers and layers of poly satin. It weighs nine and a half pounds. The dress also has some hidden pockets that are supported. Isn't that the best? They're supported by the corset. The resin gem has a reflective backing, was hand polished, and has a layer of clear nail polish to give it that reflective shine. The wig is composed of five wigs worth of hair, which includes seven drill curls, which are constructed with wire, packing tape, and many wefts of wig hair glued down. It weighs over enough four pounds. Which means this whole cosplay weighs 15 pounds. If that's not leg day, I don't know what is. With over five months taking to complete it, let's give a massive round of applause for Amy. I adore a ball gown, and anybody who's worn a ball gown knows that they do a fun sound. If you jump in a hoop skirt, it goes the <laughs> It's so great getting to hear that. Next up, we have, you're going to have to forgive me on this one. I'm going to do my best. Emma Mirliega as Scarlet Witch from Marvel Comics in the special effects category. It's the Scarlet Witch. This is a custom design inspired by the comic book and the MCU. The steel bone corset features custom machine embroidery and LED sequins sewn with conductive thread. Countless hours were spent hand sewing glass beads and adding crystals to the corset. The skirt and cape patterns were hand drafted and feature heat transfer appliques on the hem inlaid with crystals. The cape has a pocket to house the smoke machine electronics. PVA foam armor is painted with a duochrome pigment and inlaid with LED-backed infinity stones. Let's give it up for the Scarlet, for Emma is the Scarlet Witch. The sparkle on that is just stunning. There's something about rhinestones and stage lights that's just, you're gonna see my brain go blank quite a bit during the rhinestones. All right, next up in the needlework category, we have Staresco as Seth Night Road from Trinity Blood. Staresco Seth Night Road is from the early 2000s anime Trinity Blood. It's been a dream lo cosplay long in the making. The fabric for the dream green dress was hand stenciled before, begin before being assembled. Every piece of vinyl and pleather on this entire outfit was cut by hand to mimic the uneven and organic feel of the original design displayed. All of it was meticulously placed and stitched down. The underskirt has over 60 yards of lace alone. The, the boots were almost entirely created by hand stitching the layers together in order to, for them to have a structure they required, taking over 65 hours to complete. Thanks. 
to happen. All of the armored pieces were patterned and crafted through a lot of trial and error, and she has started branching into a skill that she has a little more confidence or practice in, but wants to develop her abilities. In total, this costume has taken over 600 hours to complete, making her the most time-consuming costume to date, and the fourth costume from the series. She won't be stopping anytime soon. Once you've made one Trinity Blood cosplay, you go, well, why not just spend hundreds of hours of making hundreds of hours making another? It's no big deal. Next up in the armor category, we have Yuki as Malinia, Blade of Michaela from Elden Ring. This cosplay is inspired by the video game Elden Ring. Underneath the lavishly detailed armor, there is a corset with embroidered lace embellishment. The pleated skirt is hand dyed and adorned with, adorned with 3D printed chainmail. The top is trimmed with thread, hand threaded loop, loops and is decorated with golden 3D printed jewelry and red gem accessories. The weathered cape has yeah, the weathered cape has faux fur and a golden halig, yeah, halig tree print. Forgive me. The helmet was printed by Lady Zero, but assembled and painted by Yuki. Arm, leg, and feet armor were created with EVA foam, Warbla, and Fibra, painted with gold and porcelain. The silicone applique on her left arm revealed the scarlet rot eating her character from within. Her recreation of Melania's katana is a steel core foam with thermoplastic sculpture, taller than Yuki herself. A 3D printed gauntlet attachment allows her to swing it with one hand, stealing your health bar with every strike. Let's give it up for Yuki! Ooh. Oof, I need to keep my health bar, health bar intact. I've got just a few more people to announce. Next up, we have, in the needlework category, we have Caleb Howe as Chirut Imwe from Rogue One, a Star Wars story. This seven-piece outfit consists of pants, two skirts, two shirts, a baldric, a cape, and a staff. Every piece was analyzed against the original costume using photo, photogrammet, photogrammetry ooh, to get precise measurements and tested with muslin prototypes to ensure accuracy. The gray shirt features padded shoulders and sleeves along with screen-accurate top stitching. The skirts are constructed from multiple asymmetrical panels and the staff is handmade from a, from a, a poplar branch. The cosplay is both comfortable and functional, as the flowing outfit hides three pockets within its layers. We love pockets. Overall, Chirut took 180 hours over the course of five months, from research to patterning to construction. Let's give it up for Caleb Howe. I, I adore when people stay in full character on stage. It gives me life. All right, oh boy, next up. I'm intimidated. Next up from the armor category, we have 40 Below cosplay and props as King Varian Rin from World of Warcraft. Come. The cosplay is made entirely out of foam and is shockingly light. The lion heads on the belt and knees are part of foam that were cut out, dremeled, and reattached like a puzzle. The lion emblems attaching the cape were cast in resin to keep them, from, to keep them identical. The most difficult pieces were the shoulders, which are made from a combination of beveled foam shapes and foam clay for details. This cosplay took around 250 to 300 hours and is actually one of the most comfortable things he's ever made. Give it up for 40 Below cosplay, and especially give it up for comfort. Comfort is key. Some of these cosplays are definitely not comfortable, and you got to respect when you can manage to make it both looking really, really good, and, you know, you can sit and be comfortable. All right, next up in the needlework category, we have Whitley's Whimsies as Eliza Hamilton from Hamilton. I walked in and my heart went boom. Whitley's Eliza Hamilton is a recreation of the gown worn during Eliza's song Helpless in the musical Hamilton and is comprised of eight total pieces. 
This two-tone 18th century English gown is made with blue and green silk taffeta and features a full set of 18th century underpinnings, including hand-stitched stays, a bum pad, two petticoats, and a pair of historical hand-broidered pockets. Absolutely perfect for stashing love letters from your sweetheart. Whitley made three different mock-ups for achieving the, achieving the desired fit and silhouette of the gown and underpinnings. With the entire project totaling more than 450 hours of work from start to finish and using more than 40 yards of fabric, give it up for Whitley's whimsies as Eliza Hamilton. Next up in the armor category, we're getting a little bit villainous with Draken as the Green Goblin from Spider-Man Marvel Comics and Spider-Man No Way Home. Draken's Green Goblin design is a mix of Marvel's various comic book and movie designs. The costume's armor is made from EVA foam and hand-painted to give it a classic green and purple shine, which calls back to the Sam Raimi films. The foundation of the costume is made, to, is made to resemble Norman's outfit from the first half of No Way Home, a purple hoodie and gray pants, pieces from the recreated flat green cardigan from the cosplay's humble beginnings as a Halloween costume, act as tattered sleeves. The long hood, loincloth, and pointed boots were made from salvage jackets and sewn from original patterns fashioned after Green Goblin's original comic book design. Hidden under the armor, the boot covers feature hidden coin pockets. More pockets! <laughs> The crossbody bag carries Goblin's pumpkin bombs, which are 3D printed and hand painted, as well as bubbly green potion vials. Every individual handcrafted piece of the cosplay was made from an original pattern that took anywhere from one and a half to six hours to create. Overall, the project took about five months and hundreds of hours of designing to bring to life. Give it up for Draken as Green Goblin. Before we call our next cosplay to the stage, I want to quickly ask the judges a uh, quick question. Just, what are, do you look for when you are judging a costume? You don't have to go detailed, just like one thing. Pick your favorite. Pick, what's the one thing? I mostly look for, does the material trick me? Can I figure out what it is by looking at it? Yeah. Or like, do I go, hey, what's that made out of? And I, I can't tell until they tell me. Like making EVA foam look like leather or metal or something that's not foam. Exactly. Exactly. Fantastic. Let's say. First off, this was an extremely, this has been an extremely difficult competition. But um, I think we look for clean work, um, execution, ambitiousness. I mean, but of, of course, all of these costumes have been incredible. So it, it was really hard. It was really hard. And we were so impressed by all the costumes that we've seen. Um, what I look for in a costume is the fit, is the execution, is the sewing, as well as fabric application. I'm the needlework person. Oh, yes. I, I can relate. Needlework people, absolutely can relate. See, thank you so much for that insight. So anyone who is interested in, in competing, you know, good advice from the people who will be deciding your fate. And now, let's get one of our fateful on stage. Next up, we have in the needlework category, Prince of Snark cosplay as Loquacious Seely from Critical Role. My goodness. This is an original design of the Herald of Avalir from Critical Role's EXU Calamity, brought to life in this fantastic ensemble, uh, combining the natural forms and flowing drama of nature with the sharp, clean lines of bespoke tailoring. Perfect for the bard who has left the Feywild to become the face of one of the most advanced magical cities in Exandria. The trousers and waistcoat are made from English suiting wool and are structured and finished using traditional tailoring techniques. Everything is made from scratch, even the hand-cast brass buttons on the waistcoat. But the real pièce de résistance is the self-patterned gold silk robe, complete with a Watteau pleated back and a train inspired by 18th century fashion. The gathered sleeves were smocked by hand and embellished with hundreds of crystal and pearl beads, while the body of the robe itself is embellished with three and a half yards of hand embroidered and beaded appliques featuring flowers and plants with meaning significant to Loquacious' story. In total, Loquacious took hundreds of hours of labor across more than three months of dedicated work. Let's give it up for Prince of Snark Cosplay. Oh. There are some times when there are details that you cannot see, such as 
classic tailoring techniques. That there are so many costumes here that have things that you wouldn't see unless you could literally break open the costume. So just, there is so much unseen work in so many things. And I think that you see that most in, in, in needlework, but also in, in armor. The, seeing something that's finished on both the inside and the outside is just, oh, chef's kiss. All right, next up, I'll stop talking at you now. Next up, we have in the special effects category, so twisted as Dracula from Bram Stoker's Dracula movie in 1992. This costume is a feminization of Aiko Ishika, uh, Ishioka's original design from the 1992 cult classic. It is constructed with a vegan leather corset, posture collar, and panniers made to mimic the vascular armor presented in the film's opening scenes. The corset's base is steel boning and cotton broadcloth. Beneath the posture collar is a chiffon cape that matches the A-line skirt with double slits. The helmet and opera glove are all made of EVA foam with a face plate that is uh, being removable. Beneath the face plate we reveal a gruesome handmade latex face mask sculpted in clay. This labor of love took 300 hours to construct and is the most difficult to date. The overall inspiration is a mix of some of their favorite scenes from the movie. The beginning battle, Dracula's in introduction in his castle, and his guarding of Mina. Aiko presents one of the most rich and delightful displays in this film and it was so much fun and a little bit of torture to put this together. Give it up for So Twisted is Dracula. Doesn't that just sum up competitive cosplay? So fun, but a little bit of torture. That just sums it up for me. Next up in the needlework category, we have Vetterjizik as the Traveler from Journey. This is Vetterjizik bringing the Traveler from the Journey video game back for another reincarnation. The classic fabric cloak is constructed with layers of embroidery in the battlement couching technique and framed with metallic embroidery thread in stem stitch for the thick lines. The cloak repeating glyphs are all hand beaded using two needle technique with each one being a unique design in alternating yellow and white sea beads. Much like the cloak, the scarf is brought to new life with hand beading and embroidery. But instead of the repeating glyph pattern seen in the game, the scarf spells the game title in traveler language. The simpler hood is embellished with beading compromise of the lines, I was born for this. Lyrics in the same language. How many beads is that you ask? Over 100,000. How much embroidery thread? Over 550 yards. How long did it construct? Over 2,000 hours, over two years. Better Jesus as the traveler. For those who don't know, seed beads are, um, you could fit about, you know, 50 of them on the tip of your finger. Just so you know what seed beads are, they're tiny. Oh, next up, we have something that's just my childhood to a T. In the needlework category, we have Lady Rebecca Fashions as Felicity Merriman from American Girl Felicity Surprise. This costume has been constructed from the skin out. It's got a chemise, 18th century stays, hand embroidered pockets, hoops under the petticoat, and a taffeta petticoat gown with ruched and pleated embellishments two different stomachers, embroidered silk mitts, embroidered muff, pen, a pinner cap, cloak, and necklace. This has been a dream dress of hers since she was a kid, and she was able to make the gown on a tight budget, too. It is partially sewn by machine and partially by hand, using a mixture of modern, theatrical, and 18th century methods with a mostly self-drafted pattern. Give it up for Lady Rebecca Fashion, as Felicity Merriman. Oh, of course. Anybody else uh, love American Girl dolls, American Girl books? Yep, I thought, thought, I thought you were my people. I thought so. All right, next up in the armor category, we have coming in for a sneak attack, Miss Boo as Master Chief, oh my goodness, from Halo. Miss Booth Cosplay has brought to life a completely custom Spartan super soldier, Meowster Chief. Oh, sorry, Master Chief. Whoops. Sporting a Gen 2 Mark VI armor from Halo 4, 
taking over 10 months to create. 80% of the armor base is comprised of printer paper, folded and hot glued together, preceded by five cycles of resin and sanding for hours and hours and hours on end. Which, yes, took absolutely forever. About 300 hours of just sanding. And now her right arm is incredibly buff. Embedded inside the armor is over 150 feet of wire connecting three Arduino microcontrollers running custom code to synchronize 76 LEDs and 15 of some favorite Halo themed sound clips. Grunt birthday party, anyone? Triggered by magnetic switches hidden throughout. Also installed are three speakers, two helmet cooling fans, and a microphone with power banks and storage hidden inside the thigh armor. Because every hero deserves pockets for snacks. Pockets! Underneath the armor, you'll find a handcrafted foam base under armor with a custom five-point body, five body harness that support the heavier pieces of the suit and distribute the weight for optimum comfort. There you go. Let's give it up for Miss Boop as Master Chief. All right. Next up in the armor category, we have Raging Storm cosplay as Lumiere oh, from Beauty and the Beast. This costume is made mostly out of EVA foam, craft foam, and synthetic leather. Nearly all pattern pieces were drafted from scratch, and many pieces took a lot more math than one would expect to, to use to make it all work. The candles light up all on their own. The total height of the costume with the boots and candles is seven foot four. That's almost as tall as a Wookiee. This cosplay has been nearly complete since March 2020 and was supposed to be debuted in, well, that year's contest. Raging Storm Cosplay is beyond excited to finally complete and wear this amazing cosplay this year. Let's give it up for finally doing the thing! Raging Storm Cosplay as Lumiere. I think there are quite a few of us who are in that batch in 2020 going, we're gonna compete, we're gonna compete, we're gonna... All right, we're gonna compete later. I'm so glad to get to see those costumes going across the stage. There's so much work into it. And now, let's see another one. In the needlework category, we have the Dragon Sage as Arno Dorian from Assassin's Creed Unity. Prepare to be transported into the captivating world of Assassin's Creed Unity as the Dragon Sage brings a legendary Arno Dorian to life. With an exceptional eye for detail, the Dragon Sage has left no stone unturned in their meticulous research, design, and crafting of every aspect of this iconic French master assassin. The true masterpiece of this cosplay is undoubtedly the breathtaking long coat, expertly crafted using durable cotton blend for optimal strength and breathability. The Dragon Sage has gone above and beyond to ensure that every detail is perfect, including the inclusion of over 100 functional buttons, many of them custom made, and the hand-drafted patterns and pewter cast hardware of the belts. But the attention to detail doesn't stop there. The cosplay even features Arno's pepper box pistol, French saber, and the coveted Apple of Eden. Let's give it up for the Dragon Sage as Arno Dorian. That is another thing that sometimes, as you, as you cosplay more, you learn fabric choice is important. Where are you going? Is it going to be hot, cold? Do we use, can we use polyester because it's the winter and we'll be warm? Should I use cotton because it's the summer and I will die? Important things to consider. All, all things that these experts of their craft have learned over time. And oh boy, I am, I'm lit up for this next one. In the special effects category, we have Russell Glow as Maximus Decimus Meridius from Gladiator 2000. The costume is inspired by Russell Crowe's character from the Gladiator with a bedazzled twist. With over 1,000 LEDs throughout, the entire costume weighs over 40 pounds. The helmet, kilt, and greaves and arm guards were panned patterned and constructed out of leather. The sword was 3D modeled and printed out of white PLA filament with a sheet of acrylic sandwiched in between to allow maximum light diffusion. 
The sword and shield use magnetic switches to trigger the lights when the sword is unsheathed. The scale mail vest was constructed by hand with over 8,000 pieces weighing at 12 pounds. During the construction, he had to develop new techniques to allow a tailored fit over LEDs underneath, on the vest underneath. The light vest has over 400 LEDs that were all hand-stitched to the base. Between the helmet, arm guards, greaves, sword, and shield, there are roughly 10,000 individually placed rhinestones. Overall, the entire construction of this costume took seven months. Give it up for Russell Glow as Maximus Decimus Meridius. The shine once again. I am, I am, I'm distracted by sparkle. I'm sorry. I'm real distracted by sparkle. It's so glorious. And seeing it on armor is just, I may need to learn to do armor so I can make a rhinestone armor suit. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Next up in the needlework category, we have Jewel Monet cosplay as Jadis from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Jewel Monet's design is inspired by the Ice Queen Jadi from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And the, the entire dress is made from curtains, six lace tablecloths, two pillowcases, two banquet tablecloths, four fur blankets, and many yards of organza sheer curtains. All fabrics were hand dyed and 200 handmade gems adorned the staff. Jewel Monet created each of the icicles on the crown and staff by carving candles, creating molds, and hand pouring the acrylic. From conception to completion, this was over 400 hours of work. Jewel did all of the lathe work on the staff, poured all acrylic pieces, and embellished all of the accessories with original or repurposed gems. Blue lights illuminate the crown. Jewel would like to thank her family and friends for all their support and rewards each of them with a Turkish delight. Oh, I'd like a Turkish delight. May I have one later? Oh, I'm getting some Turkish delight later. I, I have actually had Turkish delight. It is, it's honestly pretty delightful. I, I, I don't blame Edmund, it's fine. I don't, I don't blame him, it's delicious. Next up in the needlework category, we have So Say We All as Katrina Van Tassel from Sleepy Hollow. Inspired by French designer Madame Gris and the late Vivian Westwood, So Say We All has redesigned Katrina Van Tassel's iconic striped dress designed by Colleen Atwood in the 1999 film Sleepy Hollow. The circle cloak is made from black taffeta and, black and red jacquard with appliques that were cut and sewn by hand. The back features Katrina's protection spell embroidered by hand in silver thread. But in Sleepy Hollow, the horseman isn't the only one who slays. The design of each garment piece was influenced by historical methods from the cut of the bodice to the construction of the pannier underneath the skirt and made from cottons and silk from the designer's stash. No new fabric was purchased for this look. While the skirt does have pockets, there is also pockets. There's also a hand-embroidered uh, thaumatrope purse inspired by Ichabod's 18th century fidget spinner. We've always had them, they just had to be a bit more subtle. Let's give it up for So Say We All as Katrina Van Tassel! With that walk, they slayed with that alone. All right, I think I'm gonna take another chance to just chat with our judges just for a moment. Um, we all know you have to look at every single type of construction, but I wanna know, what is your personal favorite either technique or material what is to work with? What is your personal favorite? I, I want to know this. I, I think my favorite is very clearly machine embroidery. Ooh, machine embroidery. You can get so many pretty things. And you do, uh, you do uh, custom designed embroidery as well? Yes, I do digitize my own, but machine embroidery across the board is one of my favorite design embellishment details. So good, so good. I used to work in an embroidery shop and I know how useful that can be. I'll say, May, what is your absolute favorite? So anyone who knows me really well knows that I don't have one single favorite. I like a little bit of everything. <laughs> um, but I did start off doing a lot of armor, so I'd have to say I, I am a huge fan of foam work and people who can turn the foam in, or any material really into like a convincing, um, rich texture. Now, so again, the uh, tricking the eye with your materials. Uh, I really enjoy working with monster clay for uh, hand sculpting. 
it's really fun, a really, really fun uh, medium to work with. Um, How is monster clay different from the other clay? It's, it's wax-based, basically. Ooh. So you can actually melt it and pour it into molds as well. So you get some really cool techniques with it. That's really cool. I just learned something today. And that's why we have you. We love to learn from our judges because it's all about spreading the knowledge and helping others get into cosplay, helping others understand the techniques so we can all be happy nerds in costumes together. All right, let's give some more of those happy nerds in costumes on, these, on this stage. Next up, in the armor category, we have General Ninja Cosplay as Astrid Hofferson from How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World. Astrid Hofferson has been one of General Ninja's fans. Cosplay's favorite character since she first appeared on screen. When the third movie was released, the Dragon Scale Armor became her dream cosplay, which, after a couple years of hard work, became a reality. The build took several hundred hours, with not a small portion of that time being used with testing and experimenting since it was her first time ever building armor and working with EVA foam. She wanted everything to look as realistic as possible. To achieve the leather look, all the EVA foam for the armor was textured with an iron and aluminum foil before the painting process. The scales, which are made using hot glue, needed several layers of paint to achieve a similar color shifting effect as seen in the movie. Let's give it up for General Ninja Cosplay's Astrid Hofferson. Hot glue, y'all. Cosplay does not have to be expensive. Next up, we have in the needlework category, Ken Zumi as Princess Peach from Super Mario. Based on the original work of Onichu Arcs, Ken Zumi's Pinch Princess Peach was completely patterned from scratch. Underpinnings include an open hoop skirt that can break down for travel, a bustle, stockings, and a pair of bloomers. The nine panel structured bodice features stuffed, puffed, and puffed sleeves and various hand sewn ribbons, trims, pleating, and embellishments. Speaking of embellishments, this costume is adorned with hand sculpted gems cast in resin, digitally designed vinyl appliques, and thousands of beads and rhinestones attached individually by hand. Hidden from sight, the piece contains multiple secret compartments, as within the top skirt to conceal the hoop skirt, and even within the wig. It was constructed from a, boning from a boning cage, netting 50 feet of wefts, magnets, a hinge system for the wig door, and topped with a 3D printed crown. Let's give it up for Ken Zumi as Princess Peach. The amount of understructure that goes into making those shapes is impressive. Next up in the armor category, we have Sushi from Cheapling Props as Azure in the Azure Star-Lord armor set from Monster Hunter World. On the hunt for a rare blue dragon, Chipling Props is outfitted with the Azure Star-Lord armor set from Monster Hunter World. Fabrication of this costume demanded many skills required of an armor, including sewing, foam work, 3D printing, and mold making. The armor elements feature heat, sculpt uh, feature heat sculpting to emulate the organic textures of the Rathalos scales, and a faux fur wig was completely hand sewn from scratch. But defense only counts for so much when out in the prowl, and this hunter's weapon of choice is a matching longsword which features a hand sculpted horse visage with LED lights that are mirrored on the breastplate as well. 3D modeling was utilized to create the blade of the sword as well as gold accents that adorn the entire costume. Though a mask may not be canon, one was also designed and printed to protect against evil scary events scarier than a dragon attack. Let's give it up for Sushi from Chibling Props! I think that's a bit of creativity that has been really cool to see. Uh, one, one positive out of everything we've gone through in the past few years is creative masks for cosplays. Whole new bit of creativity. We love to see it. Next up in the needlework category, we have Kiki's Cosplay Service as Princess Serenity from Sailor Moon. Kiki's Cosplay Service presents Princess Serenity. With planning starting in 2018 and official construction in 2021, this childhood passion project is 100% drafted and constructed by hand. As a way to reconnect to their heritage, each moon phase took a minimum of four hours to hand bead. 
The entire corset is fully boned and made to support the weight of the dress without straps. Each iridescent pearl is hand sewn with on with lace applique between each arch and for an up close textured effect. The stars are scattered throughout the design in a repeating pattern to pull together the entire night sky. And I believe there are real constellations in this skirt. Let's give it up for Kiki's Cosplay Services Princess Serenity. I'm getting to meet so much royalty tonight. It's so fantastic. Next up in the needlework category, we have our shield maiden as Zero from the Grand Budapest Hotel. Another sustainable recreation, our shield maiden brings to life the fun and quirky world of Wes Anderson with her Zero cosplay from the Grand Budapest Hotel. This is the first full pantsuit she has created, and it took about 300 hours of piping, sewing, knitting, designing, and embroidery to bring this cosplay to life. The suit is fully lined in construction from upcycled cotton bed sheets. The hat was self-designed using cardboard and from Ike's upcycled cereal boxes. Our Shield Maiden is happy to bring another under $100 design to the stage of Emerald City Comic Con happy to celebrate 30 years of Wes Anderson films with a character from her to her favorite movies. Let's give it up for our shield maiden as, maiden as Zero. More proof that cosplay does not have to be expensive and you don't know what went into the quote-unquote simple costume. There's so much under the hood you can't see. And next up we have in the Arctic armor category Daniac cosplay with Oda Garin armor from Monster Hunter Rise. Daniac cosplay has been cosplaying for three years and this is her third full armor set. The armor is all made from EVA foam with some base armor pieces made from textured crocodile skin EVA foam to give the armor a more organic look. It's like she hunted the mar arms. Yeah. It's like she hunted the monster to make the armor herself. What a concept. In order to match the crocodile skin-like texture of the EVA foam, she used fabric with crocodile texture for the bodysuit and other fabric notions underneath the armor as well. The bone braid sword is made from XPS foam textured with foam clay and the Dremel. It's fairly lightweight for its size, only weighing about 20 pounds. Let's give it up for Daniac Cosplay in their Godagarin armor. When a prop can be that big and not destroy your muscles, we love it. And next up in the needlework category, we have Orion as Belle from Beauty and the Beast. This Belle costume was inspired by Disney's Beauty and the Beast with a historical twist on the design. Traditional 18th century underpinnings include a corset, shift, and panniers. The fitted bodice on the robe a la France, uh, Francais has features, features scalloped sleeves, ruffles, lace, gold applique, and pearl details. The underskirt draws on period design techniques and to create an extravagant royal silhouette. Belle's 18th century wig features hand-twisted curls, roses, a bow, and rhinestones. The featured rose was 3D printed and strung with LEDs to ensure that the last petal never falls. In total, Belle's look took over 400 hours from concept to final detail. Give it up for Orion as Belle. Um, I, 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 might be, I might be a little bit biased because uh, the first thing I ever competed in here was Belle, but I'm just, I love, I love recreations of Beauty and the Beast. It's just, I'm, I'm, I'm not a judge. I can be biased all I want, right? Next up in the needlework category, we have Sheridan Art and Designs as the Evil Queen from Once Upon a Time. Sheridan wanted to create an original costume for the evil queen in Once Upon a Time. I wanted to look like something that would come out of her closet on, on the show without directly copying an existing costume. She took inspiration from various garments she wears throughout the show, combining some of the characters' favorite silhouettes, garment, um, garment extras, dramatic sleeves and collars, and embellishments, rhinestones everywhere, to create a new piece that would fit into her closet seamlessly. This costume required the use of traditional tailoring techniques like pad stitching and boning in the collar and bodice, extensive pattern modifications, 
pattern drafting from the muslin drape, hand stitching, and individually placing rhinestones on the bodice and sections of the outer jacket. At this glorious, uh, honestly, pile of sparkle, let's give it up for Sheridan Art and Designs. We love the evil sparkle, it's great. For antagonist, not evil, just antagonist. Next up in the armor category, we have Tira Miausu as Vanadis from God of War Ragnarok. One of the tougher bosses you'll encounter in God of War Ragnarok as she surprise attacks Kratos with a boot stump. But this Vanadis build is almost entirely made out of EVA foam. From the metals, thick leathers, to every hand cut feather, the helmet is mostly foam with a mix of foam clay, warbla, and fabric. Every piece is hand cut, engravings hand dremeled, foam leather parts hand painted, and all metallics and feathers airbrushed. The cape is knotted together using 250 feet of jute rope. The body armor is entirely foam except for 313 googly eyes acting as rivets. Both wings together weigh 10 pounds and hold up 100 feet of strip LEDs. This is Tira, Tira Miyasu Cosplay's first time building wings and using LEDs in a build. Let's give it up for Tira Miyasu as Vanadis. If there's one thing that hosting a cosplay contest does is inspire me for my next build. I just want wings. Just give me wings, please, that light up maybe. That'd be great. Next up in the needlework category, we have Phantom Creations cosplay as Vi from, Ar from Arcane League of Legends. Here comes Vi. Phantom Creations Vi cosplay was made to replicate the version of Vi from the 2022 League of Legends animated series Arcane. The pieces of this cosplay were all made by Phantom, from the wig construction all the way down to the boot covers. This cosplay features Vi's unique tank top and sleeveless hoodie, hip sash with two belts, because the more belts you have, the cooler you are, obviously. Added points for usefulness and striped pants. The fabric for these pants was designed by Phantom and printed on spoon flower. On top of it, to top it off, Vi's signature jacket was made out of vinyl, features custom patches that were purchased on Etsy. The best part about the jacket, the pockets are real! Pockets! Let's give it up for Phantom Creations Cosplay as Vi. All right. And our final contestant for the evening, in the needlework category, we have Writer Gamer Nerd as Sarah from The Labyrinth. Writer Gamer Nerd, aka Alice, has lovingly recreated Sarah's ball gown from the 1986 classic Labyrinth. The gown was made from over 50 yards of fabric. The puff sleeves themselves each have 10 yards of tool inside. The bodice has over 100 hand-sewn crystals, each hand placed to mimic the look of Sarah's from the movie. The bodice also has several layers of satin, lace, and tulle. The skirt is six layers in total, which include panniers, an underskirt of tulle and satin, the base, a base skirt and uh, satin, and two layers of highly finicky iridescent lame, all of which require French seams in order to get the te in order to get the texture of the top layer of the skirt. Alice improvised with an instant pot steamer and lots of fabric starch. Sarah's wig is constructed from two separate wigs sewn together. Then an additional 10 hair pieces were woven in throughout to get Sarah's fullness. Alice also handmade the necklace and earrings to look just like the ones in the movie. All in all, this costume took well over 100 hours to construct, but was totally worth it because dance magic dance. Dance magic dance. Give it up for gamer for writer gamer nerd as Sarah. And with that, that is all of our contestants. Can we get a massive round of applause for everyone who just went across this stage? It is terrifying to walk on this stage to show your heart and soul to, to everyone. So thank you guys for being so enthusiastic for showing our competitors all of your love. And I believe now it's time for me to kidnap the judges for some deliberations. And I believe we have someone to help Run some fun uh, entertainment for you in the Yeah, meantime. great job. So, uh, yeah, we're going to let our judges retire. Uh, who out there wants to win some free stuff? 
All right, let's try that one more time. Who wants to win some free stuff? All right, well, we're looking for some wild and crazy competitors that are willing to come up here on stage to compete for some fabulous prizes. And somewhere out there right now is potentially our reigning champion from last year. If you're our reigning champion from last year, you know who you are, and you come up. If you're not here, well, you... Huh? Oh, you are? Yeah, yeah. Well, what are you waiting for, man? You already know what you're doing? You've done this before? You're going to go right over here. You're going to over here see, uh, see my wife right there. All right. Everybody else, I've got four spots that remain. And you have to impress me with your wild dance moves to get into this competition. So let's see what we got. Let's go. Turn that music up, Atomic Blonde. But hang on. Bring it down real quick. But don't stand on the furniture. This ain't your house. This is a brand new these stage. Are, these are brand new chairs, y'all. We can't break the brand new chair. All right, hit it. Here okay. we go. Let's go. Let me see what we got. Wild and crazy. What do we got? Wild, crazy, insane. Like, I don't know what that is. That, 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 looks, like, that looks like neck problems tomorrow. But we got that. <laughs> Head right over there. Go over to the corner. That's you got the it there. Pajamas live in effect, and I don't waste time on the mic with a dope. Oh, Star Lord. Star Lord right over here, my man. Over here. You can't see me. Ooh, Star Lord, yes. Yeah, you're definitely coming up. You're coming up. I don't know what this is. That looks scary. But go right over there to the corner, right by the big screen. I'm coming to this side. I'm coming to the other side. What do we got? You're going to injure somebody. What is... I don't know what that is. Did we all stretch before we did this? There we go. Here we go. You're coming up. Let's go. Woo! Hey, do me a favor. Make some noise for our competitors, y'all. Somebody there speaks dolphin. I don't know what that was. That was All right, right here, right here, right here, right here. One more time. Oh, 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 careful. Can't, can't careful. walk close to the speaker with the... I turned it off before I got there. I know what I'm doing. I'm a professional. <laughs> How we doing, audience? We doing good? So our judges back there are, deliber are hard at their deliberations. Do me a favor one more time. Make some noise for those world-class cosplayers. They're still hanging out back out there. On the count of three, I want to yell out which one was your favorite. And I want you to yell it nice and loud so they can hear you. Here we go. One, two, three. Yeah. I agree. I think I look great. Oh. Thank you for that. That's no, it wasn't me. <laughs> hey, make some noise for our competitors right here. Here they come. All right, here we go. Come right, come right down front here. Right down front, right down front. Right down front. And you know you're going at the end. You already know that. All right, here we go. Let's see. All right. Hey, real quick, let's introduce us to everybody. Let's start down here on the end. Hey, guess what? The first prize, you get to keep that card that I gave you. Woo! How exciting uh, is that? That's right. There's only three places you can get there. The garbage can over there at the edge of the stage, <laughs> eBay, or from me. That's it. All right, real, let's start real quick. First of all, what's your name, man? My name is Mo. What's up, Mo? What's up, Mo? How you doing, Mo? Uh, you know, I'm doing pretty good. I'm very nervous. Uh, hi, everybody. Why, why are you nervous? There's a lot of people here. There's yeah, but look, look, look. Come here, Mo. Come here, Mo. Let's, let's be real here. All these people in here are weird, just like us. You, I, I agree. Like, like right now in this audience, you have easily 700 brand new friends. Because normal people, I don't know where they are, but they're not here. Because we're awesome. I don't know if y'all knew that. You knew that, right? Yeah. So, Mo, what do you do for a living? Oh, geez. I work in insurance. Insurance. Fine. All right. We're going to move on. I want to keep everybody awake and excited. No, no. I'm just messing with you, brother. What's your name? Uh, I'm Emily. And what do you... You have a cheering section back there. <laughs> do you know that person? Um, I can't see, but probably... I mean, did you come with people? Yeah. Who'd you come with? My friends. All right. Now, what, what is it that, that, what brought you and your friends to Emerald City Comic Con? Well, we have been going for like multiple years. It's like a thing that we really like to enjoy. And last year, we went to the cosplay competition because our teacher was competing. 
All right. Very cool. Is he competing this year? No, unfortunately. Oh, that's okay. But you're, you're still excited about it. Cool. All right. So you're ready to, to have a good time here tonight? Yeah. All right. Very nice. Who do we have here? My name is Stephanie. What's up, Stephanie? How are we doing? Uh, just as nervous as Mo. Why are you nervous? Look, for real. Look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be totally, totally upfront with you. So I hate being in front of people. I know, and this is my job. Six years of college, you can do this too. It's called liberal arts degree. That's what it's called. So uh, parents are real proud. Um, but here's the thing, like for real, like all the, this is us. Like these are us. Like you're in front of you. Like for real, this ain't, this ain't you have nothing to be nervous about. Everybody out here, look, we all got picked on in high school. We all watch stuff that nobody understands. Like, look, we could have a conversation right now about how the best Star Wars movie is episode two. It's not. It's episode seven. It's not. And that's when the audience turned on DJ Elliot. It's Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> anyway, right, you agree? Yeah, Empire Strikes Back. That's what I'm talking about right there. See? So don't be nervous. Everybody, we're all the same, man. That's the best part about coming to these. So, and Star-Lord, what's your, what's your real name? My name is Simon. And uh, what do you do for a living, Simon? I'm currently a student at Western Washington University. All right. Trying to get that liberal arts degree? Uh, I'm actually going for engineer. That's pro... Look, that's, that's a much smarter move because they are paying me tens of dollars to be here. That's right. I flew Spirit Airlines here and everything, man. Boom. My bags are somewhere else. I don't know where they are, but they'll get here eventually. Uh, good to have you back, man. Hey. What have you been up to since we saw you last? Uh, helping build airplanes, because I am an engineer, making YouTube videos. Hey. Yeah, I mean, you, you kind of you you went, went viral, man. Did I? Oh, I mean, like, I'm a drummer. Oh. Oh, okay. I thought I was, I was talking about here last year. Like, I'm just saying. So, uh, so you already know what's happening. These, these poor folks have no idea. So what this is, is this is the world famous Emerald City Dance Competition. Now, here's how this works. The good news is you guys get to pick the song that you dance to. The bad news is you're going to pick that song by choosing a number between 1 and 50. Because it's much more entertaining for me. Definitely. So uh, everybody step back except for Mo. Mo, you get to go first, man. You get to set, you get to set the bar. And you're dressed nice, you look nice, you're in front of all of your brand new friends. For real, everywhere you go, the rest of the convention, people are gonna be like, what's up, Mo? Get me some insurance. What? I love you too, random stranger! That's exactly what you need to do. Except, when they do that, you need to introduce, say, I'm Mo, what's your name? I mean, I just moved here from Texas. I'm, uh, I'm waiting for some more friends, so. Um... Afterwards, find me. Afterwards, find me. Hey, I don't know if you know yes. this, but after, after this, we have a party for free right here. I do like free. Free, free is good because you spent all your money on Thursday, didn't you? I, I, I wasn't here Thursday. I spent a decent amount of money yesterday. so. We all did. All right, cool. So what's your number? What number are we going with? Well, I was going to go 24, but it's funnier than 24. All right. What's funnier than 24? 25. <laughs> He said he was nervous. I don't know what he's talking about. All right, Mo, take your spot right there in the center of the dance floor. Uh, Tom McBlonde, you got song 25 because it's funnier than 24? I do, I do. All right, tell him about this song. Um, honestly, I think you're very appropriately dressed for it. Are you ready for this? Yeah, Mo? Oh! Mo's not nervous. He was lying. All right, here we go, are you ready? There we go. Oh, Mo, I wish our prize was a new set of pants. Bro. <laughs> How do I not have SpongeBob when I ripped my pants on my computer? I don't know. Oh. 
Wow. Bro, that was, man. Dedication? You really gave your, your life out and for look, that one. You are Woo. very brave for wearing a dark color undergarments when you're wearing white pants. Just saying. All right. Man, that bar, that bar has been set. Woo! You're wishing you didn't raise your hand now, aren't you? All right, contestant two, it's up to you. How are we doing? Oh, what number you want to go for? With number two. <laughs> All right, two. number two. Song number two, what do we got? Ooh, okay, okay. It's from the 80s. Do you remember the 80s? Hang no. on, real quick, real quick. A favorite, qu favorite question, what year were you born in? 2005. Emerald City Comic Con is older than you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Woo! All right. So you definitely don't remember the 80s. All right. But this is a good one. I think you got it. Are you ready? All right. Here we go. No idea what movie this is from, do you? Just a steel town girl on a Saturday night looking for the fight of the life. There we go. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, big finish. Give it up for contestant number two. And your pants survived. Woo! Even better. All right, it's your turn. Here we go. Number. One through 50. What do you want? 42. Oh. 42. See? Look, if you would have done that anywhere but here, people would have just gone, 42? But not here. Not y'all. I said it, and I mean it. We're weird. <laughs> and it's wonderful. I like it. All right. 42. 42. <laughs> Are you ready? I believe in you. I think you're going to do great at this one. Here we go. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. Yeah! You can't touch this. You can't touch this. My, 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 my music hits me so hard. Makes me say, oh my Lord, thank you for blessing me. What am I Five, doing? four, three, two. One big finish, what do we got? Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. That was awesome. All right. Contestant number four. All right. Our future engineer. Uh-oh, he's getting real now. Well, he did try to save the world with a dance-off one, so. Take it. Bring it back. No? Okay. Gar <laughs> Am I the only one that's seen Guardians of the Galaxy? <laughs> I've seen the trailer for the new one 17,000 times this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and the Mandalorian. And the Mandalorian. All right. Thank what you number you want, man? Ooh, seven. seven. Number seven. Seven. Ooh. I'm excited to see Star-Lord do this. Let's go. All right. Are you ready, Star-Lord? All right. Here we go. Ladies up in here tonight, no fighting. All right, Shakira, those no hips don't lie. No fighting. Shakira, Shakira. I'm on tonight, my hips don't lie, and I'm starting to feel you, boy. Come on, let's go, real slow. Baby, Why are you dancing over so close to me? Oh, you know I'm on tonight, my hips don't lie, and I'm starting to feel it's right. The attraction, the tension, baby, like this is perfection. All right, big finish. What do you got? No fighting. No fighting. No fighting. No fighting. No fighting. Woo! Uh, Good job, man. That was awesome. All right, man. Time to defend your title. Time to do it. All right, here we go. No look, pressure. Look, man, we, we say it every year. We knew what song you were dancing to when you walked up here. Nah. No what? Do you think we should, do you think we should do the same one? Do you, 
Do you think we should? I don't know. I don't even. Which, I don't I forgot which one it was. You forgot which one it yeah. was. That wasn't it. Well, it is now. I think that's what the. <laughs> is this what? Do you all want this one? <laughs> You ain't seen Magic Mike? Woo! I think we gotta give the people what they want, though. Hang on, wait, wait, Let, you know, let's be fair. Give me your number, what number do you want? Yeah, no, no, for real, what number? <laughs> Tell me the number. Uh, my daughter's here, I'll say 11. 11, all oh right. Oh my gosh, that's... <laughs> no, hey, wait, no let me... No way! Let me look. Look it! Look, that is such a coincidence. Whoa. That is such a coincidence. Wow. <laughs> Miracles happen here in Emerald City Comic Con. So, uh, daughter, <laughs> uh, daughter, just get your phone out right or, now. And what you just, do is you film. Or just or make, cover your make sure eyes. You click it to the full screen. Either we want the whole thing. Film or cover, whichever one you want to do. All right. All right, let's do it. All right, here we go. <laughs> Why was he so good at that? <laughs> what, you, wow. what are you doing at that Boeing plant? You know, there's downtime sometimes. No, he's, <laughs> from the earlier, he's a welder. He wel uh, the 80s people got that one. Thank you, all seven of you, thanks. Just to find the chair and the, no? Okay. Now I know where all the people my age are. Audience, what do you think about our dancers, huh? Hey, well, it's almost time to crown our champion. We're going to give all four of you one more chance to impress the audience. All of you step forward right now at the same time. And here is your final song. Let's go. I trust you. Strike a pose, there's nothing to it. Bow. Red Agarbo and Monroe, Beatrick and DiMaggio, Marlon Brando, Jimmy Dean. On the cover of a magazine. Great. Now well, this car is automatic. Systematic. Ah, hydromatic. Why it's a greased lightning? There we go, Star Lord. I 
went through so many emotions watching that, and I loved it. Look, every they all, do that pose one more time. Just do the pose one more. Because as I looked at it, I was like, we got we got sporty, posh, baby, ginger, and scary. <laughs> all right. Step forward, y'all. Hey, audience, this is the point where you're going to vote and crown our champion. You're just going to vote by your applause. So I'm going to hold my hand over their head, and if you think it's our winner, you're going to yell, clap, cheer, make some noise. We're going to start down here on the end. Again, uh, the good news is uh, everybody's getting a prize. Oh, my gosh. We just left Groot on the ground face down. This is not okay. Oh. All right. How many of you think our winner is today? Our contestant, number three. Congratulations, you are currently in first place. How about contestant number four? Congratulations, you are now in first place. And you should check on your friends, they're screaming. I don't need if they I don't know if they need help. If they need you okay back there? You guys way back you guys way back there in Spokane. I don't know. All right, cool, cool. <laughs> I don't even know their numbers anymore. I lost track, man. This, this one right here. Congratulations. You are now in first place. All right. How many? It's Mo. Three thousand new friends. For Congratulations, you, Mo. Mo. You are now in first place. Look, man, what's up, audience? How we doing? So this dude over here, he's already won once. He's won. He got the full prize, all that stuff. And, I mean, he was great, but that's why we brought him back. Y'all enjoyed the show, didn't you? But Mo here, Mo ripped his pants. He let it all hang out in front of all y'all. Not too much, though. No. Whew. Just... Just enough. Just enough. <laughs> so when you're voting today, remember, this guy, we know he won. He did the sexy dance, made that dog uncomfortable. I mean, the dog put sunglasses on. It was just like, I can't handle this no more. But we know he won. But Mo, pants. Look, man, I didn't say this thing. Look, w did you pick your numbers? This thing is rigged, bro. This thing is totally rigged. Look, everybody's getting something. I'm just saying one person gave it everything. <laughs> so, how many of you think, and just, again, just our winner over here. <laughs> Disappointed in all of you. Or how about Mo? You know what? Look, my fa I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to admit this. My favorite part, though, is, is, I, is I do believe this right here. I do believe that you've at least made yourself one friend. Because I saw the two of y'all dancing up here together. Like, you guys now, like, for real, I expect you to exchange, exchange numbers, and I want y'all to check in on each other. Oh, I live in Austin. Oh, there you go. Nice. So, ironically, grew up in Round Rock, so. Because no one knows where They'll Round Rock is. They'll just have their moment over here. <laughs> Don't mind the 3,000 people in the room waiting yes. to see who won the cosplay competition. Hey, you know what? We're going to give everybody something. What do you all <laughs> think about that? All right. But I expect to see both of you next year. Here at Emerald City Comic Con together, you can both come up here and defend your championship. Uh, we'll have y'all, y'all can work on some choreography at home. Because right here, this is what it's all about. Make some noise for these guys up here as well. Amen. Fantastic. Next year, be up on this cosplay, com on this cosplay stage, for real. All y'all, y'all can be up here too. Thank you so much. You were fantastic. One more time, make some noise for these guys. All right, go see Tom and Bob. She's going to give you stuff. Yeah. All right. So, audience, how we feeling tonight? All right. We just did that awesome game. We made some new friends. 
We learned something about each other. Learned a little too much about some people. But it was good. Y'all having a good time tonight? Again, we do that silliness right here just to give our judges some time to deliberate. They need just a little more time. Because clearly, as you saw, there were some amazing cosplays up here. Am I correct? Again, on the count of three, I want you to yell out your favorites. One, two, three. I agree, Mo. He did good. He was real good. He's going to need to go to cosplay uh, first. What, what do they call it? The... Why, are, why are we all applying? What's what? happening? Oh. <laughs> they, look, they made new friends. Look at this guy. Wow. Wow. Hey, you remember, remember at the beginning, there was that tall guy standing up here, and he's like, hi, my name's Mo. I'm really shy. I'm really shy. I'm afraid to be on stage in front of all these people. Now he's running he up and down the pants. aisles, high-fiving people. He's like... He's just like, I love Seattle! Woo! I love it, man. It's great. Fantastic. All right. We got some music for these people. Hang on one second. Let's double check on our judges. Give me one second. It's time for a little family sing-along. If you're over the age of 30, this is Journey. If you're under 30, it's Glee. If you got a light on your phone, let's see it. Get it out. I want to see it. Again, don't forget those cosplayers back there. They can hear you. Show them some love. And sing. Just a small town. What's it smell like? I smell wine and cheap perfume. That smells bad. A smile they can share the night. It goes on and on and on and on. And nice and slow. Just slow. Go slow. Like rhythmic gymnastics. Just slow. Yeah. Watch this. Strobe light. <laughs> All right, save your battery. Everybody make a fist. Make a fist with one of your hands. Bring that fist right down here in front of your face and shake it with the music. Just like that. Shake it with that music. There you go. All right, very important. I want you to look at your fist. Stare at your fist. Just look at your fist in all its glory. Shake your fist. Just shake it. Now scream at your fist. And fist bump. Switch to the other hand. All right, switch back. This feels weird. Shouldn't feel weird. Good time tonight, somebody scream! All right, y'all. That was pretty good. But I think you got one more in you. We're going to take it back. Look, I don't have a choice, man. My wife is in charge, and she's like, keep stretching. 
Look, they told me with my wife, I can be right or I can be happy. I choose happy. Look, there are days I just want to be right, but I just want to be happy. All right, you ready? Yep, I'm ready. Hit it, y'all. Is this the real life? Yep. Is this just fantasy? Caught in a landslide. No escape from reality. Just one hand up. Open your eyes. Look up to the skies and see. And flutter down like a butterfly. I'm just a cool Okay, Napoleon Dynamite. All right. So I think we should split up the audience. What do you think? Yes, definitely. definitely All right, cool. Split it. I'm taking this side over here. Is Mo on this side? All right, Mo. I'm taking this side. Well, I'm taking this side, and I think we're gonna rock it. Wait, wait. And yeah, one, two, three. Yeah, you were good. We're split it right down the middle. All right. Yes. We're up first. Here we go. Ready? Us. Now it's your turn. Here we go. Mama, life had just begun. But now I've got it thrown it all. Yes! We love you! Everybody, both hands up. All right, turn to somebody that you know, grab them by the face and scream I love you at them. I feel the love in the room. I really I do. do. I feel it. All right, here we go. Here we go. My side. My time has come. Do shivers. shivers down my spine. Okay, my side's got it. Here we go. Goodbye, everybody. I've got That's right, crank it to 11. Oh, yeah. All right, here's where it's going to get real, y'all. Stretch. Just stretch it out real quick. All right, don't let me down my side. Here we go. We're up first. Here we go.
out, sit down, sit down, sit down. Both hands up. Spirit fingers. The dog is howling right now. Excuse me, the dog is singing right now. <sighs> Everybody make a count. We got that last part. I know here. I get it. Let's bring it home. City Comic Con, are you ready to find out who won our championship of cosplay? Then please welcome back to the stage your host. Give it up for Mama Samu. Hello, that's me. I mean, that last song, weren't you all just summoning me? I heard my name a whole bunch of times, you know. You know, Mama, sorry. Mama, sorry. Right? All right, let's go ahead and bring our judges back on stage. They've been deliberating, then they have made decisions which I hold in my hand. Let's give another round of applause for Core Geek, Meijin, and Seattle Cosplay. They're all fantastic and wonderful and have made some extremely hard decisions. And I believe next we will be inviting our competitors back on stage, I believe. Now it's time, all right, we're about to see a parade of literally all of the amazing costumes you just saw. Let's give it up for them, yes, come on. It's gonna be, all right, extended round of applause. Let's do it. All right, file in, file in. Fill in the stage, please. Get to, everybody's gonna need to get comfy. And feel free to step forward as well. We have a lot of stage to fill. I'm gonna go over here and hang out with my judge friends. Look at the lights, the sparkle, the poof, the stitching, the armor. Oh my goodness. I just, the number of hours of work on this stage is astronomical. We got, we, got, we got quite a few more. Let's keep the hype going. Keep the hype going. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Woo! All right. Let's, uh, let's go ahead. I'll have ball gowns speed back a little bit and then front. Go ahead. Start filling in the front. Fill in the front. Mind the trains. Mind the spikes. Mind the lights. Uh, go ahead and start filling in forward, filling in front. Go ahead. Uh, I will make sure that you get your. All right. Make sure we've got space for everybody. Yes. Looks like we've got one more. All right. And we have everyone on stage. Let's give another massive round of. Come on, come along this way with me. Add you in right over here. Let's get squeeze you right in over here. All righty. Massive round of applause for all of our contestants, all of the work they put in. Wearing these costumes for hours and hours and hours on top of building them. And now let's, let's have some winners. This first winner from the FX category is something you could say I'm a bit lit for. Let's give it up for Russell Glow as Maximus Decimus Meridius. Let's have you step forward, please. Come forward here. Show off. Let's have our nurse. See, why did you choose? Congratulations. Um, we chose this costume.
costume because other than being very visually impressive, which it is, it's also very technically impressive. Um, there's a lot of hand hammered leather work. It, it fits very well. All of the scale mill was done by hand as well. So great job. So much handwork. Let's give it up for Russell Glow's Maximus Decimus Meridius and let's give him his fancy, fancy medal. One of a kind from HDC and Hoku. All right, thank you so much. Our F FX category winner. Next up, we have our needlework category winner, which this, this costume proves so many things about cosplay that it's never too late. It's, there's no, there's, the only limitation is how much you want it. So let's give it up for Fennec Linan as Fennec Shen. As Fennec Shen. Congratulations, our needlework category winner. One of a kind medal. No matter your age, your gender, your race, it does not matter. You can always cosplay. And now, let's go ahead, let's hear from Seattle. Yeah, we were super impressed when we reviewed this up, up close. We were super impressed with the fit, the proportion that she adjusted the pattern to fit her body, the multiple uh, media, the multimedia constructions that you use. Um, we were just like really floored by your construction and your fit and your attention to detail. So thank you, it was an absolute pleasure. Congratulations again, Fennec Linan as Fennec Shand. Next up, we have our armor category winner. This is tough, all the categories are extremely tough. So let's, let's hear for someone who wasn't kitten around with this particular build. And give a round of applause for Miss Boof as Master Chief. Look at, look at them. Congratulations, Miss Boof. Let's hear some about some details. So the, the impressive part of this uh, build is mostly fitment. Um, pockets. Pockets. Woo! All right. And the fact that it's Peppercura, I mean, she's been hundreds of hours folding paper and then putting fiberglass on it and all those kind of things. And it just looks great. So there you go. When you forget it's made out of paper. Congratulations, Miss Boof is Master Chief. All right, let's have a massive round of applause for our category winner. All right, now it's time for the big three. We, so, first up we have third place. I believe we have fancy medal, a fancy check, and some tickets to next year's convention. So, can we get some uh, drum roll please? Our third place overall winner is Staresco as Seth Night, Night Road from Trinity Blood. <laughs> Congratulations! Excuse me one sec. I have another thing to give to you. A big, a big fancy thing to give to you. We have our two hundred and fifty dollars for you. Here you go. Congratulations! And judges, would you like to give some details on this particular build? Why, why, why you love it so much? We, when we saw this, when we, when we saw you walk into the room, we were completely in love. And then when you went into detail of how um, you spent hours and hours and hours, like 12 years investigating, getting to this point, shows so much growth. And we are really, it's, it's, again, it's been a pleasure talking to you and learning more about the details. Um, you hand cutting the applique is something that even I wouldn't do. So, and, and your combination of wire work uh, as well as V work and armor work 
is really impressive as well. So congratulations and thank you. Congratulations, Staresco as the Cessna Night Road. Congratulations, our third place winner. All right, feel free. Okay. Next up, we have our second place winner. The winner of, I believe it is, allow me to grab the big fancy thing. Thank you, contestants, for making way for me. We have our second massive check for $500, as well as a fancy medal and tickets to next year's show. Our second place winner, a character that I am personally very familiar with, is Prince of Snark cosplay as Loquacious Seely. Judges, what, what, why did you love this one so very much? We were blown away as soon as Prince of Snark walked into the room. I mean, the attention to detail, um, fully handmade, tailored, fitted suit. I mean, it's just uh, so many hours of hand embroidery, and we were just very impressed. Congratulations. Congratulations to Prince of Snark as Loquacious Seely on second place. $500, medals, and tickets to next year's show. All right, y'all, it's time for the big one. One more, one more. If only this check was twice the size, but, but you know, twice the amount of money works too. <laughs> so with our, our final, our champion for this year's, for yes, this year's uh, Crown Central cosplay, cosplay Crown Central Championships. There's a lot of C's in there for me to get through. So this, this costume, will, this person will be going to Chicago in 2024 to represent the western part of the U.S. So, can we get a massive drum roll, please? Let's have come forward a beautiful place from, a beautiful costume from a place where monsters roam wild. Let's get sushi from Chibling Props as in the Star Lord, Star Azure Star Lord set. Sushi from Chibling Parabs, congratulations! <laughs> So, <laughs> it's amazing. We really appreciated the multi-disciplines that are uh, apparent in this costume. Um, everything from EVA foam to she hand sculpted her horns out of monster clay. Those are resin cast. She created her own wig. The paint work is excellent. Anything that's 3D modeled, she 3D modeled herself beyond the printing. Um, it's just all the details are there in every place. And that's what's important if you're gonna win this big of a competition. So congratulations, you did an amazing job. Massive congratulations to our champion, Sushi from Chibling Props, as well as our other top three winners and our category winners. Let's get a massive round of applause for all of our winners. As well as our contestants, everybody on this stage absolutely rocked it. Thank you to Tech, thank you to Crew, thank you to our judges. We're gonna, could we get our w uh, winners forward and everybody around for nice fancy pretty pictures for people to take? Or feel free to leave things on this table. Uh, we're gonna get some nice pictures and for those who are looking for something to do after the competition, DJ Elliot, Nick Duvet, and Atomic Blonde will be outside the main stage on the Overlook playing some music in prep for prom. But let's go ahead and get another round of applause for all of our category and overall winners. Thank you all for attending this Costly Crown Central Championships. 
and Mama Sam, who I'm honored to have hosted. Thank you so much to our judges, Corgi, Meijin Cosplay, and Seattle Cosplay. I hope you all have a wonderful evening and enjoy prom. Once again, thank you so much for joining us this evening. At this time, please gather up.